Things are just easier when they come with a manual. Think about it. You're told about how it's supposed to be used, what it can and cannot do, how it functions, and how to keep it operating at peak performance. Would it not be so much easier if being gay came with its own manual on what to do and how to act? Well, join me today as I give you my gay manual. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the channel. If you made it here today, it's because you finally decided to come out. Well, I'd like to be the first to welcome you to being a part of the greater LGBT community. Your world has just opened up to some amazing possibilities. What do you do first? Where do you find your choices in apparel? How do you find a guy to date? Well, have no fear, my gabies. I have the manual for you. So grab yourself a vodka and cranberry, throw on your most favorite feathered boa, and make yourself comfortable on your fainting couch. I'm about to help you burst out of that closet and make your way on the rainbow highway. So let's get started. Chapter 1. Words to live by. We all know that deciding to come out is hard enough. You have to find the right words to tell your friends and even your family about who you now are. We also know that a mother can be a gay boy's best friend and chances are she's going to be the first one that you open up to about your new lifestyle. Well, there's probably just a few things that you probably should not tell mommy dearest. So let's cover a few of those now. Number one, it really doesn't hurt that much. Does mom really need to know about your sexual proclivities this early into your coming out story? Number two, wait till you see me do Lady Gaga. Mom just found out that you prefer the company of men, and she has to get used to the idea that you're probably going to be running around scantily clad with those very same guys. Do you really need to give her a heart attack by putting on some cheap dollar store wig and belting out born this way? Not just yet. Lady Gaga, you mean more like Mama Cass after she choked on her ham sandwich. And don't get me started on that hair. Hey, what's wrong with my hair? Number three, now I know why you hate wearing heels. Girl, we just covered this in number two. Let's keep it moving. Number four, you really should let me do something with that hair. Firstly, just because you're now part of the culturally elite does not mean you know how to style her updo. Chapter two, get your gaydar going. So now that you're out, how do you go about spotting your quarry? Gaydar, my dear gay boy, that's how we do it. But since you're new to the scene, yours is probably not operating at peak capacity yet. In fact, you probably don't even know what all those bells and whistles are telling you. However, there are some tried and true essentials that you can use in helping you perfect your very own gaydar. Once you try these a couple of times, you can use them to impress your friends. Just remember, only use them for the forces of good. If you're out with your friends and you happen to notice somebody with perfectly highlighted locks staring back at you, it's a good chance that he too is family and waiting for you to say hello. It's Thursday night and you're at your local bar enjoying your hot octane fruity beverage. You start to feel eyes wandering all over you and as you turn to look, you meet the eyes of someone who is wearing more bronzer than Donald Trump. This is a perfect sign that this person is also a gay man. You're at your favorite coffee shop enjoying your mocha choco latte frappuccino and in walks a guy wearing an ascot. First you look at your watch and think, is this the 1890s? Secondly, you're waiting for Scooby and Shaggy to show up in the mystery machine. Since it's not either of those two things, and only gay men really know what an ascot is, then yes, he too is gay. You're out cruising the local mall, looking for clothes for your weekend beach trip that's coming. Just as you round the corner, you're noticing the cloud of cologne moving towards you before the guy ever enters your field of view. As you look up, you notice... Wait a minute, I'm actually throwing you a curveball. This is just some teenager with an axe body spray addiction. Number three, let's talk about sex. So, we've already gotten past the easy parts of coming out. And we've discussed how to get your gaydar working so you can also detect other gay men close by. Now it's time to decide which role you may play in your relationships. You may be wondering what makes me qualified to discuss sex. Well, you mean other than the fact that you've inserted a great many things in your ass at some point in your life? I know I'm supposed to be up my own ass right now, but... Oh, is that what you want? Yup! Because that's how you get ants! Yay! What the hell was that? Anyway, back to the chapter. 
there are traditional roles that most gay men seem to fall into. Tops, bottoms, and versatiles. Now, if your head's left spinning from everything else that we talked about, let me guide you through this in just a little bit of simplistic terms. Tops are the givers, so the ones who usually initiate sex, while bottoms are the receivers from the ones that are giving. And then you have your versatiles, the true lives of the party. At any moment's notice, they're ready to jump in and take over whatever role that may be lacking or they feel more comfortable in. However, these sexual roles are also outdated. Sex isn't just about the act of putting a penis in an anus. In fact, there are couples who go their entire relationship without ever having anal sex at all. I know what you're thinking, yeah, right. But it does actually happen. There are also the joys of oral sex, hand jobs, mutual masturbation, and fraudage, to just name a few. Remember that sex is only limited by your imagination and what's legal in your state. Number four, what position do you prefer? So, you've decided to try out the more traditional roles of gaydom. How do you know which you prefer? So fear not as I share with you some basic tips that'll help you spot if a guy is a top or a bottom and help you decide which role you choose to play. Picture it, you're at your local favorite gay bar. You're enjoying your Campari and soda, and in walks a guy who sits down beside you and strikes up a conversation. As the talk progresses, he starts regaling you with how he's looking for a butch masculine type guy for his relationship. You're left wondering, is this the guy for me? Well, if you're searching for a bottom, then the answer is yes. You're standing in some dark corner of the bar listening to the newest track by Dua Lipa when a guy walks over offering you a beer. Immediately, you notice his close cropped fingernails. This is typically a sign that the person you're talking to is a top, and if I have to explain to you why short fingernails are much more important if you're a bottom, then that's a whole nother video conversation that I'm going to have to do for just specifically those people in the crowd. Secondly, if you look at his fingernails and notice that they are perfectly manicured with just a slight sheen of polish on it, then it's a good bet he too is also a bottom. You walk to the bar to order your next White Claw. As you're waiting, you happen to notice a guy who is trying to get your attention. As you casually glance over him, you realize that he is leaned up against the bar with his thumbs hooked through his belt loops, perfectly framing his crotch. You have just been caught by fly fishing. This is a top, and you're now on the line for him to reel you in. You have been talking to this guy on your favorite app for a solid week. You finally work up the nerve to ask him out on a date. You arrive at the restaurant. This is the point where you watch how he looks at the menu and orders to be able to tell who you may be talking to. You're both looking over the menu. The waiter approaches and asks if you're ready to order. The guy that you've asked out says he'd like a steak medium rare with a baked potato. This is probably a good chance that you're actually talking to a top as he's much less worried about how that steak is going to impact him later on tonight. If, however, the person takes more time and lets you order first and then comes back and says, I'll just have a side salad, then this is a sure bet you are meeting a bottom. He is planning way too far ahead for tonight's activities to be anything but a bottom. When in doubt, remember the gay golden rule. For every one top that's out there, there are 10 more hungry bottoms waiting to attack. Chapter 5. The skills that pay the bills. We have touched a little bit on how to come out. We've worked on how to start perfecting your gaydar. And we've even discussed a little bit about sex. But is that really enough to get you very far in your fabulous gay world? I say to you, surely not. You need a few more skills to make yourself a tad bit more interesting. Well, you're in luck. I have a few to share that will be helpful in almost any situation. Number one, listening to others. Now, I know what you're saying. We all learned this back when we were in kindergarten. It's polite to listen when someone is talking instead of talking over top of them. However, this skill is even more important in your gay life. I know it can be difficult to listen to other people, especially when the conversation is a tad bit dry, but this is where you must work a little harder. Try these simple steps to help make it seem like you're a little more interested in what the person's saying. Meet them eye to eye and look at them with intent. From there, nod your head occasionally to make it look like you're actually listening to what they have to say. After all, nobody wants to talk to a self-absorbed person all night long. Number two, learn to mix at least three cocktails. Why the hell would you not want to learn this? After all, if your dating life isn't going as planned, this will at least get you through a lonely weekend. It will give you a rotation of cocktails that will help make that being alone on a Saturday night a little bit easier. Secondly, once you finally get that guy back to your bedroom, you'll at least have three options available in case one of the cocktails isn't to his liking. Number three, being able to understand and engage in witty conversation. After all, being cute will only get you so far. 
and there's only so much you can do with your mouth if you're not able to hold on to a conversation. Being able to talk about a myriad of things makes you seem deeper and a lot more interesting. And how did you meet your current boyfriend? Because this is definitely not witty in your looks. Hey! And lastly, number four, learn how to prepare at least one good meal. My mother always told me that the fastest way to a man's heart was through his stomach. What she didn't tell me that the fastest way to get him in bed was an entirely different organ altogether. Granted, with this advice, you may run the risk of looking like a one-trick pony. However, if you're cute and can carry on a conversation, you may be able to get by with only having to cook this one meal every few months. So when it's actually time for you to cook again, you can drag this recipe back out and impress that hot guy you've been dating one more time. So there we have it, five fantastic chapters that'll help you get acclimated to coming out. This abridged manual is designed to help you exit the closet and get you started on your journey. Use it well and it will be your guide on the rainbow highway that is your gay life. Just as the editor's comment, this entire video is to be taken with a grain of salt and the amount of sarcasm that was implied. After all, how you choose to live your gay life is your choice alone and should not be dictated by anyone or anything. The more you know. Remember, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, then follow it up by mashing that bell button. That way, any new videos that come out, you'll be notified as soon as they're live. If you're a returning visitor to this channel, make sure you give this video a big old thumbs up and tell me what you think about it in the comments below. If you like it, even better. Be sure to share with me any of the advice that you would give someone who's just coming out. If you've tried any of this advice and it works for you, let me know what some of your experiences were like. I'm always intrigued to hear more about my viewers. Thanks for watching the video and we'll catch you next time.